Hello everybody, so this is chapter 15. I know they're all out of order, but I'm going for chapters 15 and 16 and hopefully we'll get back on track. So, outside in the garden at that very moment, Aunt Sponge and Aunt Spiker had just taken their places at the front gate, each with a bunch of tickets in her hand. And the first stream of early morning sightseers was visible in the distance, climbing up the hill to view the peach. We shall make a fortune today, Aunt Spiker was saying. Just look at all those people. I wonder what became of that horrible little boy of ours last night, Aunt Sponge said. He never did come back, did he? He's probably fell down in a dark hole and broke his leg, Aunt Spiker said. Or maybe his neck, Aunt Sponge said hopefully. Just wait till I get my hands on him, Aunt Spiker said, waving her cane. He'll never want to stay out all night again by the time I've finished with him. Good gracious, what's that awful noise? Both women swung round to look. The noise, of course, had been caused by the giant peach crashing through the fence that surrounded it, and now, gathering speed, every second it came rolling across the garden towards the place where Aunt Sponge and Aunt Spiker were standing. They gasped, they screamed, they started to run, they panicked. They both got in each other's way. They began pushing and jostling, and each one of them was thinking only about saving herself. Aunt Sponge tripped over a box that she'd brought along to keep the money in and fell flat on her face. Aunt Spiker immediately tripped over Aunt Sponge and came down on top of her. They both lay on the ground, fighting and clawing and yelling and struggling frantically to get up again. But before they could do this, the mighty peach was upon them. There was a crunch. And then there was a silence. The peach rolled on and behind it Aunt Sponge and Aunt Spiker laid ironed out upon the grass as flat and thin and lifeless as a couple of paper dolls cut out of a picture book. Chapter 16 And now the peach had broken out of the garden and was over the edge of the hill rolling and bouncing down the steep slope at a terrific pace. Faster and faster it went and the crowds of people who were climbing up the hill suddenly caught sight of this terrible monster plunging down upon them. They screamed and scattered to right and to the left as it went hurtling by. At the bottom of the hill, it charged across the road, knocking over a telegraph pole and flattening two parked cars as it went by. Then it rushed madly across about 20 fields, breaking down all the fences and hedges in its path. It went right down through the middle of a herd of Jersey cows and then through a flock of sheep and then through a paddock full of horses and then through a yard full of pigs and soon the whole countryside was seething mass of panic-stricken animals stampeding in all directions. The peach was still going at a tremendous speed with no sign of slowing down and about a mile further on it came to a village. Down the main street of the village it rolled, with people leaping frantically out of its path right and left. And at the end of the street it went crashing right through the wall of an enormous building and out to the other side, leaving two gaping round holes in the brickwork. This building happened to be a famous factory where they made chocolate and almost at once a great river of warm, melted, velvety chocolate came pouring out of the holes of the factory wall. A minute later, this brown sticky mess was flowing through every street in the village, oozing under the doors of houses and into people's shops and gardens. Children were wading in it up to their knees and some were even trying to swim in it and all of them were sucking it up through their mouths in greedy gulps and shrieking with joy. But the peach rushed on across the countryside, on and on and on, leaving a trail of destruction in its wake. Cowsheds, stables, pigsties, barns, bungalows, haystacks, anything that got in its way went toppling over like a ninepin. An old man sitting quietly behind a stream had his fishing rod whisked out of his hands as it went dashing by, and a woman, called Daisy Entwistle, was standing so close to it as it passed that it took the skin off the tip of her long nose. Would it ever stop? Why should it? A round object will always keep on rolling as long as it is on a downhill slope. And in this case, the land sloped downhill all the way till it reached the ocean. The same ocean that James had begged his aunts to be allowed to visit the day before. 
Well, perhaps he was going to visit it now. The peach was rushing closer and closer to it every second and closer also to the towering white cliffs that came first. These cliffs are the most famous in the whole of England and they are hundreds of feet high. Below them, the sea is deep and cold and hungry. Many ships have been swallowed up and lost forever on this part of the coast and all the men who were in them as well. The peach was now only a hundred yards away from the cliff. Now fifty, now twenty, now ten, now five. And when it reached the edge of the cliff, it seemed to leap up into the sky and hang in suspense for a few seconds, still turning over in the air. Then it began to fall. Down, down, down. Thud. It hit the water with a colossal splash and sank like a stone. But a few seconds later, up it came again and this time up it stayed, floating serenely upon the surface of the water. Now we'll finish with a picture there of the peach flying off the end of the cliff and then it goes down and down and down into the sea. And we'll find out what happens in the next chapter. Bye bye.